Hi everybody, welcome to this week's book talk video with me, Anne, from the adult services section of the library. I've got three books to share with you this week. The first book I have to share is Code Girls by Liza Mundy. So here's what the cover has to say. Recruited from small southern towns and posh New England colleges, 10,000 American women served the U.S. Army and Navy as codebreakers during World War II. While their brothers and husbands took up arms, these women moved to Washington and, under strict vows of secrecy, learned the meticulous work of breaking German and Japanese military codes. Poring over reams of encrypted messages, the women worked tirelessly in makeshift facilities in Washington, D.C., Arlington, Virginia, and Dayton, Ohio. Their code-breaking triumphs shortened the war, saved countless lives, and gave them access to careers previously denied to them. In the process, many got their first taste of the big city, made lifelong friends, and fell in and out of love amid the heartbreak of war. Ordered never to reveal the details of their wartime work, these women were all but written out of history. Now, through her dazzling archival research and interviews with surviving codebreakers, Liza Mundy has brought to life this vital story of American courage, service, and science. At the heart of Code Girls is Dot Braden, a feisty Virginia school teacher who in 1943 leapt at the chance to take a mysterious job with the Army at a place called Arlington Hall. With Code Girls, the children and grandchildren of Dot and those of thousands of other women will finally learn the complete story of their accomplishments. So obviously this is a nonfiction book. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I thought the author did a great job of making history very readable and I happen to love history and even sometimes when it's dry I'm like oh I'll slog through this this is interesting but sometimes you just don't want to have to do that and this was a very readable approachable story and very interesting too I didn't know anything about these women co-breakers so I think it's a great opportunity to learn a lot um history women's history world war ii history you know cryptanalysis history a lot going on there very readable approachable book I highly recommend it the next book I have to talk about is An American Marriage by Tayari Jones, and uh, I also read this book, very much enjoyed it. If you don't take my word for it, it was an Oprah book club selection in 2018, and I mean, sure, I get it if you don't want to, you know, go with what I say, but I think we can all agree that Oprah picks out some good books. So anyway, here's what the cover has to say. Newlyweds Celestial and Roy are the embodiment of both the American dream and the New South. He is a young business executive, and she is an artist on the brink of an exciting career. But as they settle into the routine of their life together, they are suddenly ripped apart by circumstances neither could have imagined when, while visiting Roy's parents in their small Louisiana town, Roy is arrested and sentenced to 12 years in prison for a crime Celestial knows he didn't commit. Though fiercely independent, Celestial finds herself unmoored, taking comfort in Andre, her childhood friend and Roy's best man at her wedding. As Roy's time in prison passes, she, un un she is unable to hold on to the love that has been her center. When, after five years, Roy's conviction is suddenly overturned and he returns to Atlanta ready to resume their life together, Celestial is faced with a soul-wrenching decision, whether to let go or to try to rebuild a marriage that has lost its underpinnings. This was a very good book. And again, Oprah. I mean, do I need to say more? No, but I will because that's what I do in these videos. I very much enjoyed this book. It was almost a character stuff. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how to describe it. It was very intriguing. It, uh, very emotionally wrenching and it was a very good book. I highly recommend it. I know it's a little vague, but I don't want to give anything away. So the last book I have to talk about is Sin Eater by Megan Campisi. Now this one I have not had a chance to read yet, and that's what I plan to do after work today. So, you know, looking forward to it. So this is what this one has to say. Let's see. The Handmaid's Tale meets Alice in Wonderland in this inventive historical novel about a girl in 16th century England who is sentenced to be a sin eater and finds herself caught up in a deadly plot at the heart of the Queen's court. For the crime of stealing bread, 14-year-old May receives a life sentence. She must become a sin eater, a shunned woman, brutally marked, whose fate is to hear the final confessions of the dying, eat ritual food symbolizing their sins as a funeral rite, and thereby shoulder their transgressions to grant their souls access to heaven. Orphaned and friendless, apprentice to an older sin eater who cannot speak to her, May must make her way in a dangerous and cruel world she barely understands. When a dear heart appears on the coffin of a royal governess who did not confess to the dreadful sin it represents, the older sin eater refuses to eat it. She is taken to prison, tortured, and killed. To avenge her death, May must find out who placed the dear heart on the coffin and why. An extraordinary lyrical feat of imagination, Sin Eater is the story of a world where treason and secrets abound within a corrupt, violent court, and an outcast young woman must uncover a long-buried secret that has resurfaced with a vengeance. 
I don't know. I think there's a lot going on. This looks good. Looks interesting. Uh, besides The Handmaid's Tale meets Alice in Wonderland, another comparison on the back of the book is The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco, another good book, recommend, uh, meets Wolf Hall. So I think a lot of us have heard of Wolf Hall too. So uh, yeah, that's some high praise. Those are some good books they're comparing this to. So I'm excited to read it and uh, I would advise you to put it on your hold list too. So that's all I have for this week. I'll see you next week and I'll talk to you soon. Happy reading. Bye.